Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. I'm the Serious Strategy Gamer, and this is Taskmasters, where every Tuesday I go up against other YouTubers to design ships and other admiral dreadnoughts and play against the AI. Whoever does best in these challenges wins the game of the week. So, this week is going to be quite interesting because it's a subscriber submitted scenario. But before we go into that, I want to do something new and I want to give you a recap of last week. So, how did we do? How did each of our competitors do in last week's challenge? Now, uh, for those of you who don't remember, last week we were designing a battle cruiser and we were choosing against how many cruisers we were going to go up against. Where every light cruiser we sank gave us one point, every heavy cruiser we sank gave us two points. But the twist was you had to survive the match to get any points. So if you got sunk, no points at all. So that led to a very interesting balance where you had to sort of think about how many ships you wanted to go up against with more ships being more difficult a task but earning you more points. Now, it did turn out to be quite a devastating match for some of our competitors. Brother Monroe. He did design the task and he was uh, going in with a very, I think, fairly fairly me intermediate design, uh, I would say. So a fairly normal design. He was going up against 20 heavy cruisers and he had a pretty balanced design. He chose 12 inch guns. I think he had a speed of 30 knots and uh, 12 inches of armament. So all in all, a very rounded design. But it did turn out that he was not so much up against the AI which brought 9 inch guns on the 20 heavy cruisers. He did manage to sink 16 of them, but then they were just whittling him down over time and he got a flash fire in the end, so he was sunk, earning no points whatsoever. That does bring us to Stealth 17, who did uh, go up against uh, the AI slightly differently. He was uh, bringing in more armament, he was bringing in much more speed on his ship. He was going up against a much more substantial fleet too. He was choosing 10 heavy cruisers and 50 light cruisers to go up against. If he had managed that, he would have, ma ma he would have won the game. But, unfortunately, he only brought in, he brought in 13 inch guns and some torpedoes, which were interesting. But 32 knots was also a very fast ship, but only 6.5 inches of, uh, of belt armor. And that was not enough to stop the AI. Even though he was incredibly lucky with the light cruisers, they only had 3 inch guns. They were basically the Coast Guard uh, coming to haunt him again. But the heavy 10 cruisers, the 10 heavy cruisers, they got him too. Um, just knocked him down. Wars Torpedo got a flash fire, so also, unfortunately, Stealth 17 was sunk and he didn't earn any points. Spartan, on the other hand, he did fairly well and he did as Spartan would do. He was picking 18 inch guns, so massive guns. Uh, fairly heavy armor, I would say, at 10 inches, belt armor, but that came at the cost of a fairly slow speed. 23 knots uh, going up against the enemy. He was Go doing pretty well also at torpedo dodging, I have to say, um, but in the end, was uh, he wasn't sunk. He got uh, topped once or twice in the end, and he just barely made it over the finish line, sinking all enemy 10 heavy cruisers. So that was uh, 22 points. Two points for each of these light uh, heavy cruisers and two points for finishing all of them. So 22 points, not bad for Spartan Elite there, but... We actually managed to best uh, all of our competitors last week because if we were going up against 50 light cruisers. We were going up with a fairly heavily armoured uh, setup with 14 inches of belt armour uh, and only a couple of 12 inch guns uh, at the fairly low speed, 31 knots. Um, but we did manage to sink all of them, so that's 50 points for us, plus the finisher bonus makes 52 points for us last week. So. With that little recap, let's go into this week and see what we're going to do. So, we are going to go in a scenario where it is 1899, it is Spain having lost just against the United States and looking for new designs. It is actually a design competition where we design three ships to go up against a German fleet of two battleships, two heavy cruisers, two light cruisers and four torpedo boats. Is that really four torpedo boats? I noted down four torpedo boats. Um, and the, there are a couple of uh, challenges here. One of them is, uh, well, firstly, we do need to go up against the Germans. So let's set that up. Uh, let's go to 1899 over here. 
General Fleet is going to start in 1890, so that's uh, slightly better. Uh, they don't have any battle cruisers, of course. They do have no torpedoes, but four uh, torpedo boats. Right. So that's uh, the setup that we have here. We can choose fairly, uh, fairly openly. Uh, the only thing is, we are not supposed to be the United States, Germany, for obvious reasons, and not Spain. So Spain is looking for foreign ships to buy, and I think uh, I did brief look at this, and I think we want to play the Russians here because. It is going to be difficult to find a setup here uh, that is uh, going to be useful for us because one of the challenges that we are uh, facing here is that we can only use 12 inch guns that's that's okay uh, we are supposed to use very long range that's okay but we also have a maximum length of our ships of 333 feet so that is a bit of a challenge honestly so let's see how we're going to do that 100 meters basically i think um and yeah so the ultimate uh, scoring system is we do need to sink everyone, but then it does depend on how much the ship costs when we do manage that. Every ship that we have lost costs us twice as many points. Now, we could of course be also trying to design no battle cruiser, but heavy cruisers or light cruisers. Now the thing, the issue with light cruisers is, as far as I can tell, in 1899, they only had have submerged torpedo tubes and that is not going to cut it so i think we're going to go with the battleship here that is going to be costly in terms of how much well literally it costs but i think we can go for fun system here now the big issue here is uh the length of the system and i actually started this up before just to check out where i could find that it took me a while down here you have got the length so this already is kind of a bit too long and even if we bring that down uh, you will find that I think this is still too long. So this is not a legal design for this week's challenge. But if we do pick a different hull tablet up here, I think we can get it to a point where it is slightly below the 333 feet. So um, in fact, we can bring that up again. So we just need to check when it becomes a little bit bigger there on the screen. There we go. So yeah, I think 11,300, 330. Yeah, I think that's that's about it. 11,330 tons, that should still be below the length here. So this is a legal design and it's kind of, I just, I mean, this, this ship, it's just, it's kind of cute, isn't it? Um, let's do pick a front tower here. Uh, let's do pick a rear tower. Uh, let's pick this one. It's slightly smaller. Uh, we will, of course, need a funnel at the very least. And just, just, it's, it's a true pocket battleship. It's tiny. Uh, main guns, we can only pick 12-inch guns. These are all Mark II, so I think that's exactly what we're going to do. We can pick either... Well, that's a lot longer reload time. So two barrels is minus 30% rate of fire. The accuracy is slightly lower too. On the other hand, we would, of course, have two barrels instead of just one. Well thing is, I'm not too sure regarding the weight distribution here. I remember we do have to pick very long range. Even if we go extremely slow here, this might just about cut it. Hmm. Well, we'll see. Uh, let's get slightly better stuff over here. I think we do need to have induced, induced boilers. Yeah, natural boilers are just too slow. Um, even if we go up on the armor here, um, we do need some protection for sure. This does actually work kind of all right here. Uh, let's go with heavy shells. I think we're going to go with... Uh, let's take gun cotton. Let's do pick some range finding here. I think we can probably reduce the deck armor here. I don't expect us to be fighting at very long ranges. So that does save us some, some stuff there. I guess we can go up a little bit here on the belt extended armor. Conning tower is fine, turrets is fine, secondaries, honestly, you can go down a little bit. We don't have terror, uh, we don't have them for now, uh, but I think we are going to get some soon. Um, let's do pick some anti-torpedo protection because we know that there are going to be torpedo boats. Um, and I'm guessing we are going to pick six inch guns because they are kind of nice. Okay, that is a bit of an issue here. Can we just, uh, how about the other secondary tower? Rear tower too? Yeah, okay, that should fit now. There we go. Just look at just look at this cute compact ship here that we've got. It is it is not very cheap. I'll give you that. So in in terms of the design itself, 
it's probably not going to win this week. Um, but at least I do feel fairly confident here uh, that it is going to do something. And that, I think, is already a kind of okay. Uh, at least we are hopefully not going to die immediately. Uh, I would very much like to have at least standard barcats. Ah, oh, Jesus, there's already too much, isn't it? We've also got an aft weight offset here of 20%. Now, this is a forward offset. How about... Oh, this is, this is going to be a super awkward design, isn't it? This is still a fairly high offset of, of uh, weight offset here. But if we move you a little bit to the front here, it doesn't matter much, it seems. Mm, can we move you a little bit to the front here? No, we can't, apparently. Well, that aft offset is is horrible, actually. What if we remove that remove that entirely? Where well, we actually need two main guns here. Well, we could, of course, use a different caliber here, but I really, really hate. If you know my designs a little bit, you know that how much I actually hate using different calibers on on any ship. It's gonna give a very weird firing pattern here. I kind of dislike that. Can we do anything to shift a little bit more weight to the rear here? We could get rid of you here, of course. That doesn't actually change much, does it? Wow, that's that's a fairly big offset here. 9.3. If we do it like this. We could, of course, try to pick some Kazamats here into the front. Oh, these really have a horrible firing arc. Yeah, that's not worthwhile at all. This is super awkward. This is super awkward. I dislike the afterward offset. 10% is fairly hefty. And what a what a really awkward design this is. It's I mean we're rarely designing chips in 1899, so well I guess it's fine. Right, heavy shells. Um can we go for enhanced reloading? Uh probably can't. So what what are we really spending the weight on here? Fuel Belt, belt extended, that's fine. Engines, bulkheads. Bulkheads are kind of hefty here. They are still st only standard bulkheads. Standard ammo, we could go for more there. How much overweight are we? Enhanced. It's a 10% rate of fire increase here. Okay, what if we go down a little bit on the main armor here? Go to 9 inches and 6 inches here. Okay, yeah, that does work, actually. We're still at 11%, which is horribly too much, but what can we do, eh? Well, what we can't do is increase the speed. Hydraulic, I think that's all right. We could try to pick even more secondaries on here. No, but I think they're all kind of too big. Oh, we could fit someone in here, but it wouldn't have any firing angle, yeah. Okay, I think it's it's alright. Some guns have poor. No, I didn't quite believe that. We had 6.4 million. That is, that is kind of substantial. But I guess it's just what it is. Look at it. This this just weird shape. I think there was a video by Drachnifel, um talking about some of the French designs, I think. It almost reminds you of that uh, Russian circular ship. That was uh, just a complete circle. Well, let's see. Let's see what the AI brings up against us and whether we do have any shot here at uh, winning this uh, this turn. Right, so we've got two German battleships which are just laughably big compared to ours. Just look at this. They have got... Is that three turrets here? It's It's much, much bigger than what we have got. Okay, enemy here is to the north. I'm going to go 10 times speed because this is probably going to take a long, long time. Just, yeah, just watch this speed dropping here. It's, it's just a little bit ridiculous. Right, but there we go. I do need to remember making uh, to make a screenshot at some point because uh, these, these things are just uh, too cute. Well, I'll probably forget and uh, have to do that uh, in another session, as I usually do, but let's see. Right, so yeah, I, it's a weird design. I just, I just, I, I already regret that choice. 
I should have gotten... I should have eaten the, uh... The disadvantage of, of just getting more salvos on there. Uh, of, of getting more barrels on there. Three barrels, it's not a lot. And the Germans are probably gonna at least have six, uh... Six larger calibers. Even if they're probably not gonna have a uniform uh, battery. Well, let's see where they are. By the way, if you do have a design uh, suggestion, plus uh, please do let me know in the comments down below. Yeah, halfway offset. Okay, there we go. Uh, that's the enemy. Let's see what they have got over here. That seems to be pretty much the battleship. And ooh, what are you? So you've got two times. So you've got four 12-inch guns and one 11-inch. Gun. That's the 11 inch gun there. Well, that's. That's. I mean, just. What on earth? This little bridge over the tower here, that's. It's a weird design. It's a very weird design. Uh, well, let's see what we can do. Right. So we are at a distance here of 6 kilometers. That should be fairly aggressive already. So I'm going to say that they're going to turn here to their left, which means we probably want to turn right to remain parallel. Uh, I am somewhat concerned about the amount of uh, smaller ships that we're probably going to be facing. Um, I'm guessing we can for now go to armor piercing, because I think that is what we will need, if we are to score a hit at least. I um, guess we can go a little bit faster here. We are going to turn around here to this direction. I think 30 knots are fine. That does give us the best uh, modifiers here for speed. That is the second battleship, I'm guessing. Yeah. Notice uh, how poor their firing angles are here uh, with their rear turrets. Whereas I think we probably can already use ours. No, it's also pretty poor. Yeah, I mean, these tiny ships do have significant disadvantages. And we also haven't really spotted any of the uh, smaller ships yet, which will be concerning because we do not have that much in terms of torpedo protection. Right, uh, let's hold here for a second. Let's look at what this threat is. That seems to be the light cruiser or the heavy cruiser. I'm thinking the light cruiser. Six inch guns. Interesting. Do you have torpedoes? Yeah, you do have torpedoes with a very small range though. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use our secondaries, our six inch guns, on the light cruiser here. Uh, and we're going to switch to auto, whereas our uh, main guns of all ships are still going to target their battleships. I think that is going to be a decent choice here. Right, that is the heavy cruiser then, I'm guessing. Looks fairly similar. Well, it's a, a sleeker design actually in terms of its guns. Seven inch guns, interesting. Also torpedoes, man. Right, no hits being scored really so far. At least no uh, noticeable ones. Well, there's there's one hit of four inch. Doesn't really matter too much, I think. Yeah, but let's see. I'm guessing we want to probably. Ooh, there we go. That's that's a nice hit here. Rotter damage and some flooding. And look at how quickly she is filling up. Uh, she's only has buoyancy of forty percent left uh, after a single hit here, the Koenig. That does tell me she probably has very poor bulkheads. No standard bulkheads actually. No, minimum bulkheads, but standard quality. Yeah, that is it. So, one more hit, and she is gonna go down. At least if it's if it's if it's a hit here in the front compartments. Now that is a good hit here, but it wasn't really uh, low enough in the keel to cause some flooding. Right, there are further ships behind her, but that's okay as long as they're not really close to us. I'm not too concerned. Some hits here on the light cruiser too. That is good. But really what I want to hit is the Koenig. Koenig is going to turn to the rear here now. And uh, Weissenburg is going to take point. While she is uh, trying to turn around here. That is good because she is... Uh, well, it's good and bad. Because she's on the one hand she's very slow. So uh, that does give us some benefit to sinking her. And um, let's switch targets here with a little light. Uh, with our secondaries here to this presumed destroyer. Torpedo boat? No, that's another light cruiser. This up here is probably... No, that's a heavy cruiser. Well, we don't know. Heavy cruiser over here. Now, these two are the heavy cruisers. This is the light cruiser. Okay, yeah, that's fine. Right, um, as I was saying, 
Koenig here is uh, very slow, but she is turning quite heavily, so I'm not sure whether we are going to get some bonuses to hitting her, but I do like that she's presenting the front, because that does make it so much more likely that we're actually going to hit her in that uh, in that area. Causing a fire there, and on the light cruiser, that is nice. But I am worried about there. Ooh, look at that. Yeah, she's going down. Let's switch targets to Weisenberg. Light cruiser is still going to be targeted by the 6-inch guns. And... We are hopefully going to sink Weissenberg quickly here. Now, that's not a battle cruiser because battle cruisers don't exist in this time frame. Oh, good hits there. That's that's probably going to be another 40% flooding. So another hit like that, and uh, Weissenberg itself is also going to go down. Oh, there's there's uh, there's another ship there, and let's actually turn away a little bit because I'm slightly worried about this. This might be their their torpedo boats, and we definitely do need to be afraid of these guys. What's your range? Only a kilometer. That's good. Probably you have fast torpedoes or something. And we do score some hits here. That's nice. Yeah, just keep on keep on shooting at Weissenberg with your main guns and the 6-inch guns are... I do like the layout of the 6-inch guns. I do not like that you're burning so fast. Ship is on fire. I think at some point I saw the changelog saying that... Uh, there was going to be more information about fires, but I don't really see that much more, to be honest. Right, honestly what I'm going to do here is because I do not want to get penalized for um, for losing a ship. I'm going to turn away and hopefully out of the line of fire a little bit. Uh, while the battle line here is, is still going to continue charging ahead. Still going to continue to pommel the torpedo boat here. Do need to be mindful of this thing there too. And hopefully Weissenberg is going to suffer some damage at some point. Yeah, but at least the fire has shifted. Okay, that's okay. Let's uh, do go for you. This is another torpedo boat. I think they had four, right? Okay, flooding. That's good. Okay, Folia, you have... Uh... Oh, nice. Good hits there. She's not going to... She's not going to be able to survive that. Right, Weissenberg... Burning, but not much more than that. I don't see their remaining torpedo boats, though. That is slightly concerning. All right, let's have you go a little bit faster. Okay, there we go. That's probably more torpedo boats there. That is the higher priority target than the light cruiser. Nice. Good hit there. She's probably going to go down already. No, let's uh, keep on targeting her. You never know with the AI ships. They are sometimes incredibly lucky. Let's turn inwards a little bit. I think Weissenberg does need some more love from our main caliber guns. Come on. Yeah, and she, she's stopped flooding, so she's not taking on any more water. I think we do need to be a little bit more aggressive here. Coming a little bit more inwards towards them. Yeah, Weissenberg has flooded badly, but not badly enough for my liking. Do we want to switch targets towards Michael, maybe? Michael? No, Michael. Michael? Ah, I don't know. And we've got York, too. Always a little bit confusing. You would think that it's uh, such a British name rather than a German one, but uh, apparently not. Right, okay, there we go. That's another... To Peter Boat. These guys are going to be kind of tough. I mean, they are only appearing here at three kilometers, which is uh, kind of kind of close. A little bit too close for comfort, actually. All uh, right, that's uh, also s nice. Okay, there's there's another flooding hit on Weisenberg, and uh, she's actually sinking due to fire. I did not expect that. Okay, uh, you're changing to her. That's okay. What are you targeting? Um, can you actually target York and then this uh, thing here with the secondaries? Remember, she has about a kilometer range in terms of her torpedoes. She's already made good one kilometer. Well, she's still closing in. We are turning a little bit away here. That's good. How fast are you actually? Yeah, much, much faster than we are. Okay, good hits here against uh, the CA. I'm guessing we're going to switch here to, to high explosives. Uh, because I'm slightly worried about this ship here. That's actually our most important target at this moment. 
We do need to call some engine damage at the very least. Okay, some damage here on, on Mikhail, that's that's good. Uh, let's switch to York, but still of course do, gonna do secondaries here on the torpedo boat. 1.3 kilometers away. She needs to go down. She, she may not come in closer. Yeah, she's gonna go down though, so that's nice. Okay, secondaries on Leipzig, that's good. Whereas York is still targeted, nice. Mm, you can go all out on, on Danzig, I think. Whereas you are still gonna split that fire. Yeah, that's okay. York is flooding, but I don't think she's gonna get on yet unless we do hit it no her another time. Right, um, let's turn Volia around and let's have you guys go a little bit here closer to what? No, we cannot go come closer to Dunzig actually. Yeah, okay, she's she's suffering now though. She is pretty close. She might actually already launch torpedoes. And given how many torpedoes she has, that might also be in the, her front tubes. York sinking there? Okay, let's just focus far on Dunzig. She's a, too big a threat at this point. Yeah, okay, that's nice. That was actually closer than uh, you would think. Uh, right, let's try to target the torpedo boat there. Let's go up a little bit faster here. I'm guessing we can pick high explosives. And yeah, she is going to go down. And that is the last ship, I think. Yeah, it is. So, very, very nice. That is it for our attempt this turn. It's not the cheapest ship, um, but I I was tempted to go for, for torpedo troopers. But it's, I kind of, I like the cuteness of it all, you know? With this little... I don't know. It just feels like it's it's a funny in a way in in a certain way it's a very elegant ship. So, that being said, thank you very much for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed. Uh, do note that number here. We are paying six point four. That's our proposal to Spain. Uh, built these battleships here of, of tiny size uh, for six point four million dollars. And let's see how our competitors did and whether they actually managed to survive this time around. Hope to see you next week. Oh, also, last thing. Do let me know whether you like the summaries of, of last week's uh, and whether I should continue that. Bye bye guys.